Sparky's usually rhythmic energy pulses were jittery, sending a ripple of unease through the Andromeda Queen's bulkhead. Easy there, buddy. What's got you spooked? Gus patted the wall panel, its soothing glow now flickering a nervous orange. A burst of images flooded his mind. A swirling vortex of stardust. A colossal structure shimmering with a power he couldn't comprehend. And an overwhelming sense of beckoning. That's one heck of a dream you got there, Gus scratched his chin. Ancient ruins, huh? Think you can lead us there, space ghost? Sparky responded with a pulse pattern Gus was starting to recognize as a smug, you betcha. The floorboards hummed with a comforting warmth as Sparky funneled energy, the engines revving with a new kind of anticipation. Getting used to ship alien telepathy was one thing. Gus never thought he'd be the kind of guy to take a starship out for a spin based on a hunch and a funky light show. Then again, he'd never met anyone, human or otherwise, quite like Sparky. All right, Sparky, let's see what you found. He strapped into the pilot's chair, the battered seat, a stark contrast to the newly installed glowing membranes responding to Sparky's emotions. Gus wasn't sure when his maintenance job turned into designing mood lighting for a spaceship, but hey, kept things interesting. Their first interstellar jump was, well, let's just say it involved a lot more spinning than Gus was comfortable with. Think you missed a decimal there, Sparks, he muttered, wrestling the controls. Sparky sent a placating pulse that was the equivalent of an embarrassed shrug. Guess even aliens ain't perfect navigators. An odd warmth blossomed in his chest. Maybe he was too used to being alone. After the initial hiccup, the journey became surprisingly smooth. Each jump landed them further off the usual trade routes than most haulers would dare. Gus spent his downtime rigging makeshift interfaces that let Sparky manipulate the ship more precisely. The two of them a symphony of muttered curses, triumphant whoops, and the ever-present thrum of Sparky's energy. Then, there was the time Gus stumbled upon a hidden compartment, revealing an ancient hollow recorder tucked away. Sparky, what the heck have we got here? He hefted the device, curiosity battling with ingrained tech skepticism. With a few well-practiced tweaks and maybe a mumbled swear or two, the recorder sputtered to life. The screen flickered and Gus squinted. Grainy security footage played back, each entry a vignette of past crews aboard the Andromeda Queen. Eyes wide with terror, tools flying on their own, panicked shouts echoing through the corridors. Gus barked a laugh. Well, I'll be... So that's your idea of a good time, huh? Scaring the coveralls off those poor folks. He could almost feel Sparky's smugness pulse through the deck plates. Sparky's apologetic glow did nothing to stop Gus's laughter echoing through the empty halls. Sometimes, life as a starship mechanic got just plain weird, but in a good way. Days blurred into weeks as they ventured deeper into uncharted space. The Andromeda Queen thrummed with a new sense of purpose pushing past her previous limits as Sparky honed its navigation skills. Gus's fingers danced over control panels, his swearing now a ritual of trust rather than frustration. They weren't alone in the void. A clan of reclusive asteroid miners, their faces weathered like the rocks they harvested, initially eyed them with suspicion. But when Gus bartered jury-rigged ship repairs for their local gossip about unusual space phenomena, they warmed up, their tails tinged with the awe of those who lived on the fringes. Then, there was the encounter with the junk haulers, a motley crew clearly more enthusiastic than skilled. A near collision was narrowly averted when Sparky shorted out their comms systems at precisely the right moment. The haulers fled in a huff, but Gus found a new stash of spare parts drifting among the wreckage they'd left behind. Thanks, Sparky, he grumbled appreciatively as he wired a scavenged power modulator into an overheating junction box. Sparky responded with a satisfied hum, the ship's conduits glowing like a proud grin. Amid the quirky encounters and unexpected upgrades, their destination drew near. The usual bustle of comms chatter faded. Even the usual cosmic background radiation seemed eerily muted. Just us out here now, huh? 
Gus mused, the familiar solitude now laced with the thrill of the unknown. Sparky's answering pulse resonated with an echo of the ancient energy it had first sensed. Up ahead, a nebula shimmered, its gases swirling into shapes both beautiful and unsettling. Whoa there, that's a lot, Gus whistled. Think we can get through that, buddy? Sparky's confidence flickered. Images of churning anomalies and unseen dangers flashed through Gus's mind. All right, all right, he patted a panel, more to reassure himself. Remember, no ghost can withstand the stubbornness of a human mechanic. He took a deep breath. Time to get to work. Entering the nebula was like diving into a storm-tossed ocean. Sensors screamed with indecipherable readings as the Andromeda Queen shuddered and strained. Even Sparky's usually steady energy pulses surged chaotically. Easy now, Gus gritted his teeth, fingers tapping over consoles, desperately trying to compensate. Come on, girl, you can handle it, he whispered. Yet beneath the panic, he felt a sliver of unexpected exhilaration. He'd fixed rust buckets held together by duct tape and prayers, but now he was battling the might of the universe itself. And he was doing it alongside a creature from the heart of the stars. He spent hours, or were they days, lost in a flurry of rerouting power, sealing hull breaches, and shouting unprintable things at the uncooperative sensor displays. The nebula tested them both to their limits, but somewhere in that maddening symphony of malfunctions, a strange rhythm emerged. Gus, usually a man of tools and schematics, began to anticipate the nebula's shifts. Sparky, in turn, learned to direct its energy bursts, reinforcing the hull where a split threatened or diverting power surges before they could wreak havoc. When they finally broke through, Gus slumped back in his chair, too exhausted even to swear. The Andromeda Queen drifted, her hull battered but intact. Ahead, the heart of the nebula glowed a mesmerizing tapestry of pulsating energy and shimmering otherworldly structures. We made it, Gus whispered in awe. He reached for the panel near him, tracing the glowing membrane. We made it together, you hear? Sparky responded with a pulse of warm satisfaction. The floorboards hummed a contented tune. The civilization Sparky sensed was no ordinary ruin. Structures of shimmering crystal rose from the swirling nebular gases, thrumming with a power that made the ship's engines feel like mere toys. Gus felt dwarfed, yet strangely connected, as if the thrum of the ancient structures resonated with Sparky's very essence. So this is what called you, Gus murmured, what your people were like, and, or maybe what they became. The exploration was slow, cautious. Sparky guided them, now translating the energy patterns of the ruins into a language Gus could understand. They found vast libraries filled with indecipherable symbols, energy chambers pulsing with unknowable purpose and echoes of a civilization far beyond their own. One day, huddled in the surprisingly cozy engine room over lukewarm ration packs, Gus dared to ask the question that had been simmering within him. Sparky, you, you happy here? Sparky's answering pulse was soft, tinged with a bittersweet longing. Images of the lonely centuries sealed away and the Andromeda Queen flickered across Gus's mind, followed by the exhilarating freedom of their journey and the profound connection to the echoes of its ancestors. Yeah, Gus said quietly, think I get it. His gaze swept across the nebula. This is home now, isn't it? In the way it never was for me, he grinned. Besides, I'd miss you too damn much, you overgrown glowbug. A ripple of warmth washed over him, and somewhere in the humming core of the ship, Gus swore he heard the closest thing to laughter an alien spaceship could make. Their discovery shook the galactic community. Scientists flocked to the nebula, eager to study the remnants of the lost civilization. Sparky, now able to communicate more clearly through the ship's systems, guided them, sharing fragments of its vast knowledge, while Gus shielded them from the worst of the bureaucracy and politics that inevitably followed. The Andromeda Queen became a bridge between worlds, part research vessel, part fiercely protected haven. Of course, 
Not everyone was happy about an independent mechanic and his alien partner holding all the cards. Whispers of seizing the Andromeda Queen reached Gus. Sneaky offers for exclusive contracts dripped with veiled threats. One particularly persistent researcher tried to bribe him with enough credits to retire to a tropical paradise for the rest of his life. Gus just laughed, and he meant it. Tools in hand, he winked at Sparky, whose response lit up the command console in a mocking shade of pink. Screw paradise. He had it right here. The years blurred into a tapestry of discoveries. Sparky, attuned to the energy echoes of the universe, revealed hidden nebula nurseries where stars were born, and even a strange cosmic anomaly that seemed to bend time itself. Gus, inspired and challenged by these wonders, pushed his engineering skills to unimaginable levels. The Andromeda Queen became legendary, less a ship and more an embodiment of their shared spirit. Yet, the heart of their adventures remained the moments of quiet. Evenings on the observation deck, watching ancient stars flicker into being. Gus sharing smuggled whiskey with a creature made of light and laughter. Or afternoons in the engine room, the steady hum of the ship lulling him to sleep beside Sparky's glowing core, a place strangely warmer and more comforting than any bed he'd ever known. One clear night, Gus tilted his head back, tracing the familiar constellations distorted by the nebula's glow. We did good, huh? He murmured, more to himself than to the stars. Sparky's answer was a warm flush along the bulkhead, followed by a teasing pulse that translated roughly to, don't get a big head, grease monkey. Gus chuckled, a deep contentment settling in his chest. Yeah, they did good. Out here among the endless wonders of the universe, a stubborn mechanic and his spaceship ghost had found something extraordinary. They'd found a way home. Word of Gus and Sparky's adventures even reached the backwater planet where Gus had grown up. News feeds showed grainy images of the Andromeda Queen cutting through nebulae alongside sleek science vessels. The local bar, where he'd spent too many nights drowning in cheap hooch, probably still had his name etched on a dusty stool. He'd never been the type to get nostalgic. But one day, a message reached him, a cracked transmission carried by a long-range cargo hauler. His sister's voice, aged and hesitant, came through. Gus, it's Maggie. We heard, heard about what you're doing out there. Pa passed a while back. Reckon you'd maybe want to come home? Gus stared at the comm unit, the silence of the ship suddenly deafening. Home? The word had lost its meaning years ago, hollowed out by too many lonely nights and too many goodbyes. He reached out, then hesitated. The smooth panel below his touch hummed with Sparky's watchful presence. Choice is yours, Gus, Sparky pulsed, a comforting weight against his mind. It was a choice he'd never had before. The return journey was bittersweet. Each star system brought him closer to a past he'd tried to outrun, a past full of ghosts he wasn't sure he wanted to face. Sparky, sensing his turmoil, filled the ship with warmth and the soft echoes of their shared adventures. A constant reminder of the family he'd built in the depths of space. Landing on that familiar, dusty ground, Gus found time had indeed ravaged his hometown. The once booming spaceport was a shadow of its former self. Maggie waited, no longer the pigtailed kid he remembered, but a woman with lines on her face that mirrored his own. They stood awkwardly, a lifetime of unspoken words between them. Finally, in true Gus fashion, he broke the silence with, so, uh, mind showing me where I can find the nearest ship parts shop? My ship could use a tune-up. Maggie's startled laugh echoed through the stillness. It was a start. The following weeks were a mess of strained conversations, creaky floorboards, and shared meals tasting of too much salt and too little conversation. He fixed up Maggie's aging farm equipment, his skills honed by the starlight proving surprisingly useful on the ground. Yet, he couldn't shake the feeling of being a visitor in his own life. One evening, he found himself at Pa's old tool shed, a place he'd avoided. Moonlight filtered through the dusty window, illuminating a familiar shape, a battered toolbox 
packed and untouched since the day he'd left. He sank onto the old workbench, fingers tracing the scratches and dents. This was his legacy, passed on to him by a man he barely understood. Suddenly, the vastness of the stars seemed to press in, suffocating. All he'd ever wanted was to get away, and now he yearned for the hum of the engines, for Sparky's playful companionship. The decision settled over him in the soft moonlight. He belonged out there, hurtling through nebulas and uncovering ancient civilizations, together with an alien entity that understood him better than blood ever did. Packing was quick and brutal. Maggie found him by the shuttle, her mouth set in a stubborn line. No goodbyes this time, Gus. He swallowed hard. Mags, I ain't good at this, the staying part, but you want to know something? This time, leaving, it's different. He gestured to the distant stars. This time, I got a home to go back to. He didn't ask her to come, he wouldn't. But when he looked into her eyes, he saw a flicker of something like understanding, maybe even acceptance. The Andromeda Queen pulsed a cheerful greeting as he stepped on board. Sparky's joy washed over him, a balm to the aching hollowness. He was back where he belonged. Gus didn't forget his family. He sent supplies Maggie could never afford, tech updates that revitalized the failing farm, and even rigged up a clunky comm system so they could talk whenever the erratic signal allowed. Maggie, surprisingly, became his reluctant ambassador to the wider world, fielding requests for interviews and messages from fans, her voice filled with a gruff pride she tried to hide. The galaxy kept on spinning, and so did Gus and Sparky. Their discoveries shaped and reshaped what the galactic community knew about the universe. Whispers of magic and legend followed them. But the Andromeda Queen and her crew remained stubbornly grounded. The ship still held together with more duct tape than elegance. Gus is still muttering his colorful commentary amidst marvels. Yet, the years wore on. Gus noticed a subtle shift in Sparky's energy patterns. The boundless enthusiasm had softened, replaced by a quiet contemplation that hummed through the very core of the ship. Sometimes, they would sit in silence on the observation deck, watching ancient star clusters fade and reform, and Gus felt an indescribable weight settle between them. One day, as they drifted on the edge of a newly discovered nebula, Sparky sent him a pulse, a wave of complex emotion he struggled to decipher. It was an echo of the nebula's own song, of cosmic cycles and endings that lay beyond even Gus's broadened understanding. You, Gus hesitated, feeling suddenly small. You want to stay, out here, among them? Sparky's answering pulse was soft, yet firm with a kind of ancient rightness. It was both homecoming and a journey into the unknown. The preparations were surprisingly mundane. Gus spent weeks adapting the Andromeda Queen, building interfaces Sparky could manipulate without a human intermediary, creating life support systems that existed somewhere between biology and pure energy. He worked with the same relentless focus and muttered curses that he always did, but this time, there was a tightness in his chest he couldn't ignore. The leaving wasn't a goodbye, not truly. They had built a bond that stretched across light years, a connection that still sang in Gus's mind. The nebula enfolded the Andromeda Queen. Through the viewport, Gus watched Sparky's essence merge with the swirling gases, becoming part of the cosmic cycle of birth and change. And for the first time in a very long time, tears stung the corners of his eyes. Goodbye, old friend. I'm sure we'll meet again, eventually, Gus said warmly with a smile on his face. The journey back was solitary. The Andromeda Queen felt colder, the corridors too long, the engine hum too quiet. He spent the first few nights curled up where Sparky's core had once pulsed, soaking in the lingering warmth. But Gus wasn't a man to wallow for long. There were still stars to chart, wonders to uncover, and somewhere out there, a space ghost was dancing among the nebulae. One day, on a dusty frontier planet, he found a new crew, a group of misfits, mechanics too eccentric for the corporate ships, scientists too curious for conventional research. 
He taught them, grumbled at them, and shared stories by the flickering campfire light of distant suns. The Andromeda Queen thrummed with fresh energy, a new generation echoing within its ancient walls. The galaxy was vast, filled with endless possibilities. And Gus, the stubborn mechanic with the heart of an explorer, knew that even among the endless wonders of the universe, his journey with Sparky would remain the most extraordinary adventure of all.